at the pace I'm going and what's happened so far, anything can change at any time. I know that. But I don't see myself getting married or having kids, honestly. And I have, you know, my, you know, my quirks about me and I'm, I mean, that could change. I don't think it would take very much, like, enjoys being with me as much as I enjoy being with them in no uncertain terms. I haven't found what it means yet. I understand the love, like, family-wise, parents and stuff like that. That's kind of a given, I guess. But in relationships, I haven't come up with a complete definition. I don't really understand it. I think I, I might have been and then just, like, swiftly gotten over it. Like, no, it never ends well. Well, I've, honestly, I've never really been in a serious relationship ever. It's always been, like, I like a guy and we hang out a couple times, get to know each other, and then there's always a beginning and an end. After it's over, it's never good. Like, they don't want to see me or they run in the other direction. It's really bizarre. None of the guys that, like, I, like, gotten interested in, you know, there's been more communication. Like, it's never been serious or relationship that ended bad badly, I've learned from. I guess that's the only positive thing that's come from it. But, um, I just had to learn that nothing is like set nothing is guaranteed nothing is nothing is assumed and people you know they often react on like selfish impulses like what's gonna please me like now what can I get for me not thinking of the other person it's kind of been a pattern of mine to like pick selfish people I don't know I'm kind of selfish myself but um that's what I learned that like, you don't have to have labels for things and relationships or anything. It's what you make of it. That's what I learned. I'm not keep messing up, making mistakes, learning. I mean, that's all I can do. I hope it's out there. If it is, great. If it happens to me, great. If it doesn't, keep breathing, right? Everyday scenes inspire me, such as one day I was waiting for the bus, and I saw this guy walking, it was like early in the morning, it was like 5 o'clock, dawn was just happening, I was downtown, there were skyscrapers, you know, and, and this guy is walking down the sidewalk, and I can see, you know, the outline of the city surrounding him, and he's holding two bags, just stuffed shopping bag, and he's kind of hunched over and slumped, and he's holding the bags, and he looks so weighted down and it's gray because of the dawn and all of a sudden I see these pigeons just like shoot up behind him and raise up into the air so it was like the paradox of you know ascension versus being weighted down and it was so beautiful and things like that just those moments inspire me you know it can just be you know it, at times I wish that I was a photographer instead of a writer because those moments I would love to capture I would venture to say that aside from the muses I find inspiration in almost everything Life's daily scenes we all act out, the well-placed words of verbal accidents. Not too long ago I was driving, and can't remember where, I passed an exit, the sign read, Need More. Well, that was the name of the place, I kid you not. As I looked off to the right I saw car dealerships, restaurants, gas stations, and strip malls. That's an example of what gets my pen in motion. Into the heart of contradiction, I saw not the face of apathy nor the face of hope, but the heart of contradiction. The intricacies of isms and schisms, the complexities of paradoxal proof. A flame burst and burned forth from within both ends, internally ignited by outside methods. I looked into the cruel eyes of justification's intent, the intent to justify. My eyes saw the symbolism of symbiotic odds, the pull and repel of rational reasoning, the thoughts and the unthinking, and the thinking of unthoughts. I have lived the way of the lost and the lost way of the found, and I find myself unrelenting and unreflecting the face of apathy or the face of hope, but the heart of contradiction felt in my own. You don't 
Flannery O'Connor was asked that same question. She was asked, why do you write? She said, because I'm very good at it. And I think that, I want that to be the reason Hebahaba pursues what they do. Not for any kind of happiness or spirituality or, you know, fun, you know, or good times. Or to, I find material out of joy and, and, and jumping, you know, around in the woods. I find material out of, like, you know, smashing my head against a, a, a piece of glass because I'm so frustrated with something, you know. And I can, then later on I'll write a couple lines and I might turn into a song, you know. I do total hatred, total deep, dark depression to total, like, you know, light-hearted joy, you know. I think they both make good songs. It was a documentary I saw about graffiti called Style Wars. Technique versus style, style will always win. That's what they say, and I believe that, you know. You have to style your fucking, it's fashion. Not fashion in the sense where you're wearing clothes, but fashion, like you're fashioning something. You're fashioning the energies coming at you in all directions, you know, and you're fashioning them, you're sculpting them. Sometimes sculpting is stripping away. Yeah, how many places bigger than this? 